Hi everybody! Last week I did a video on how to create a chat bot with the new assistant tool from OpenAI. That tool is more related to the API integration, but what you really want is the ability to make your own GPT. So in today's tutorial, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to create your own custom personal GPT from scratch. So let's get right into how this thing works. First, to make your own custom GPT, you will have to have the GPT Plus plan, which is $20 a month. That also comes with access to features like vision, speech, and of course GPT-4, and a whole lot more. Well worth it if you're a big consumer of ChatGPT. As for our own GPT bot, if you signed up, look for the Explore link. It's located in the top of the left column. If you just signed up for Plus, it might take a few days for it to appear. At least that's what happened in my case, and I know a lot of other people had that issue. But uh, for me, it now appears, so I'm going to give that a click. And as you can see, it took me to a My GPTs page. You will see a uh, Create Your GPT, and below that, a bunch of GPTs that OpenAI has already released. Uh, I guess this is in preparation for the uh, GPT store, which is coming out fairly soon. But before then, you can play around with uh, some of these, including hot mods and data analysis. As for uh, this video, we want to create our own GPT, so click on the Create a GPT button. And that brings up a new screen. It's a split screen, with the left side being the... Uh, GPT Builder side and the right side the preview of our GPT. On the Builder side you will see two tabs uh, Create and Configure. We are on the Create right now which is the easiest way to create a GPT. Configure is just a little more advanced and as you can see the GPT Builder has already messaged us indicating that it's ready to create our GPT. What would you like to make? Well, in this case, we want to make a GPT. So now the real fun starts. I've already pasted into the box uh, the type of GPT I want to make. Uh, in this case, I want to make a GPT that can provide information, uh, scores, and stats on the all-time Grand Slam tennis champions at the Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. And the reason I chose this is because ChatGPT's uh, standard knowledge base only goes to April 2023. My GPT will include the tournaments since then, including the French Open, uh, which was finished in June, Wimbledon finished in July, and the US Open in September. So the standard GPT does not have that information. Mine will, or mine should, and that's going to differentiate it from the uh, regular GPT. So let me just make a few more changes to my instructions on this. And I want to remove a couple items here at the bottom. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Let's send this off to our chat GPT and see how it does. Okay, now it's going to start building the bot, and it has come up with a name and pre-populated some suggestions in the preview screen. And look, because it's linked to Dolly, it also comes up with a logo on the fly. Uh, Eastats Pro. Okay, that's our name, and there again is our logo. Uh, again, it just created that. I didn't even ask for a logo, and it came up with its own logo, which works for me. I guess we'll take all of this. Great job. I'm going to let it know that uh, this is great. And again, there's the suggestions box already pre-populated. Great job. Love it all. And now it's going to think a little more. I will admit it is very slow. I guess there's a lot of usage on this uh, application right now, understandably. All I 
did was ask, tell it the great job so far and fantastic. I'm glad you love it all. <laughs> Ace Stats Pro is now set up as a pro tennis expert. Okay. Uh, next step is we want to make a few more adjustments and refinements as it says. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go up to the configure, click that. And as you can see, we have uh, some fields here, the name, description, that's already filled out, instructions, that's also filled out. Let's go ahead and complete this uh, name field. I don't know why it didn't automatically fill this out, but uh, we are Ace, uh, what are we, Ace? Ace Stats Pro, so I'm just going to type that in. You can change this to whatever you want. As you can see, it's updating uh, across the screen. Okay, our name is filled out. And now we want to go down to the bottom, which is where the real magic happens, where we're going to upload our data. And that's one of the most important things about creating your GPT. First, I want to have you take a look at the file I am going to upload. This is my CSV file. You can see it's in Excel. Um, it's just a simple document of all the Grand Slam tennis champions through history, including uh, this past season, which uh, again is very important because the standard GPT does not have or should not have this information because this is uh, post April 2023. But uh, very simple to create. I just pulled this off Wikipedia, pasted it into Excel, and uh, this is what I'm going to use for this GPT example. Of course, you guys can create your own data sets, your own uh, documents, whatever you want. You can upload it. Uh, but for this case, I'm using this uh, Tennis Grand Slam Champions. So let's get this thing uploaded into our GPT. So I'm just going to click Upload here, click on my CSV file, Open, and that will upload it to our GPT. Again, you can have any kind of documents you like, PDFs, text, uh, SQL, SQLite, many other formats. Uh, I think the assistant I showed you last week, I believe in that you are limited to 20 uploads total. Uh, so that may still be the case uh, for these GPTs. Of course, today I'm just doing one upload. And if I don't add my own documents, then what's the purpose of these GPTs? Aren't I just really using just the standard GPT, just with my own specific uh, prompting? Uh, now that the file is uploaded, I want to instruct it to refer to only the uploaded file when uh, coming up with the answers to the questions. So I'm just going to type in a instructions to make sure uh, ASTATS Pro does exactly that. Okay, if I could only spell answering, we'd be on our way. Give me a few more uh, minutes or hours. I'm sure I'm going to get this right. And there we have it. Okay, so the instruction is good to go. I'm happy with that. We might come back and revisit that later. All that stuff is very easily customizable. Now let's jump into our actual bot so let's run this beast and see what happens okay first I want to I do want to save it that's also important to do and uh, once you save it it brings you back to the main screen and you can run your bot from here but in this example I just want to keep it in the editor mode and let's go down here and try our first query so for our first uh, query, I'm going to ask our Ace Pro, please list the last five U.S. Open men's champions. Now again, this is something that our standard chat GPT should not have because the 2023 September U.S. Open result, it won't have because again, its data set ends in uh, April of 2023. 
and as you can see it pulled up an error which I've been encountering a lot of recently but it does uh, try it again automatically which it's doing and more often than not it does work okay there's the purple check mark and voila there's our result last five US Open men's singles champions are as follows Novak Djokovic he does have the 2023 result and then of course Carlos Alcaraz and the rest of them so that worked out really really well standard chat GPD does not have that so let's give it another one a little trickier who was the last North American man to win a Grand Slam title and if any of you viewers know that one put it in the comments uh, that's a tough one actually let's see what a stats pro can come up with come on ace you can do this also what you can do is click on the uh, analyzing button and it will show you what's happening behind the curtains oh it's already come up with the answer wow there it is 2003 us open andy roddick the last North American man to win a Grand Slam title was Andy Roddick. How about that? That is excellent. Excellent job, A-Stats Pro. You truly are a tennis expert. Okay, let's uh, give it something else here. Um, I am going to ask it, how many different players has Novak Djokovic No, I just want players, yeah. I'm going to go, how many different players has Novak Djokovic faced in Grand Slam Finals? And I'm going to add, what is his overall record in those finals against those players? So it's going to have to just look at all the Grand Slam Finals he's played in, who he's played, and then tally his win-loss against those players overall in Grand Slam finals so let's see how this comes up and it's contemplating it's looking through my document pulling out the results we have an answer 14 different players he's played in Grand Slam finals overall record against each one. Oh, Andy Murray five and two Casper Ruud, 1-0, and zero. Nick Kyrgios, 1-0, and zero. Juan Martin Del Pocher. Look at Stan Wawrinka, 0-2. I bet you that's his worst record against anyone in major finals. Uh, Roger Federer, 4-1. Yeesh. If you're a Federer fan, that's not good. Rafael Nadal's got 4-5. But this gives us a comprehensive view of Djokovic matchups in Grand Slam Final. And wow, as you can see, this is pretty legit. It's answering these questions correctly. And, you know, a couple of them weren't easy questions to answer. And in my last example, it did a really good job with my request, spitting out the answer and then breaking it down. Um, it's really impressive. And again, regarding the data, I've seen a lot of discussion the last week. People have been asking, what's the point of making these GPTs? when the standard GPT does a great freaking job. And that's where the data you upload is so important. That's where you can add value. And in this example, as I've showed you, the standard GPT doesn't have this recent uh, sports data or tennis data. So perhaps a stats pro might have a place in the new GPT store ecosystem. So keep that in mind when building your own GPT. I do want to go over a couple of settings to consider for your GPT. Uh, in the top right corner, there is an update button. That's to update your GPT and choose your publication options. You can see it has uh, only me, that's private, only people with a link, so I could send that to my friends if I wanted. Just paste cut, cut and pasting the link you see in the URL sending that to someone that will work I'm actually gonna leave that in the description and then the public version that I guess is for the GPT store option you will need to link a domain to it to make that work I believe um, and then also back to the configure section and again here's where you see all your setup information now consider all the information 
that you see here as public even though it's behind the scenes just consider it public even the document um, this is still in the early stages of this rollout I don't think uh, there's a way to hide it all for now um, but so don't upload any sensitive or proprietary information at least not in the near future I'm sure OpenAI will eventually get that uh, solved but I'd be very cautious about open uh, uh, uploading anything you don't want to make public now let's go down to the bottom you will see one more button here and that is the add actions and actions are a powerful feature of GPTs uh, they let you perform tasks such as add events to calendars modify documents for our example like let's say I wanted to email this list out or have GPT have a stats pro rather email this out to uh, my cousin that's all I gotta do is type that in and if I added that action or hooked it up it would do that so it's actually very very powerful so that's our first GPT now let's go back to the main screen you can see our a stats pro is now listed under GPT and again you can send out that link to people you can also run it whenever you want and use it as you see fit but uh, that wraps up this video if you found this uh, video helpful please hit that like or thumbs up and subscribe for more future AI content and if you built your own GPT and you'd like to share it feel free to leave it in the comments I'll leave mine in the description thanks again for watching and see you in the next video have fun building your GPTs.